So Roxanne asked a really good question. I was about to run out of here. I said, I'm done. I'm, that's it. And of course, you know, because I do this all the time, it's, you know, it's second nature. But you want to put this on the web. So how the heck do you do that? And uh, it's not the same. It changed in Flex 2. And, and they have something called a, uh, here's right here, an export for release build. And this is why I like the drag and drop so much. And so if you go over here and you, I'm going to go to the nav menu real quick, make sure I'm on the right thing. So I'll go window, nav menu. There you go. I'll show that to you. Let me just open this project up real quick. And I don't have a release bin right yet, but if I go right here and I hit uh, export for release build and I click on that, I want to make sure I'm on the right project. See, it says Mike Project Hub 2. That was the last, that was my last one. That's why it's so important to set that default because lots of times when you run this program, if you're running from a component, it will always go to whatever your, your default application is set at. And so I make sure that's clicked on. That's the bin release folder. I'm going to go, okay, that's good. That's what I want to do. And if I open this up, I should be able to go finish. And what it's going to do right now is going to save the changes to make sure everything's saved, but it's going to export everything I need for the web. Now, Flex as it is now has a ton of debugging information in it because of all that debugging. So that kind of slows the program down. So what it does here is it removes all of that and makes it web ready. Now, in Flex 2, it kind of kept the debugging information. We had troubles with that. But when you take it all out, you actually, it, it brings, slims the file size down, almost about half. And so in my release bin folder, that's it. That's everything right there that needs to go on the web, period. So if you put all that on the web and you run the HTML folder right here, the, uh, the HTML wrapper, you see that right there? That's the HTML wrapper file. You point to that, this program will run. Now, typically what I do is I change this HTML wrapper name to index. I put a folder on the web and I just throw all this in it. And, and you just click that folder and this file runs. So that's the big secret right there is bin release. So just go right here, bin release. Then what I do is I bring up FileZilla and I drag and drop all this onto the web, and I'm running. Do you want me to do that for you real quick, or do you think you got it? You got it? Anybody want to see that real quick, or do you think you got it? Okay, so I'm going to bring up FileZilla real quick. And I, I can't, I have to let it go. So. so I'm in FileZilla right now, and all I have to do is type in my host name. And then my username, and then my password, which of course I wouldn't want to have recorded here. Hit quick connect, and there I am, quick connected. And on this side is all, all my folders, and on the other side is my web folders right here. And so I want to go ahead and open up this, and this is SiteGround, so the the folders go under public HTML, and then I'm just going to create a directory, and I'll call this directory what, Covington or something? Hit OK. And now what I want to do is just drag all those Adobe Flex project pro folders over into uh, that folder, Covington. So I'm coming over and grab Covington. They open it up. There it is right there. So all the, all the folders need to go there. So I grab these folders right here. And I just squeeze this up a little bit. Sorry. Uh, get it right so you can see it. Just trying to open this up so you can see it. There you go. Come on, open for me. I just grab these folders here and I just drag everything and drop it. Boom. And it's transferring everything over. And now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and, uh, once everything is transferred, rename that to index. Of course, you want to keep the HTML tag, of course. And I could have just pointed it to that without renaming it to index, but you just, an, an extra thing your user has to, has to uh, did it not go? Has to type in, so I want to avoid that. So now it's on the web. I, I've just put it on the World Wide Web. Anyone can access it in the world. Uh, I, I found that this has become extremely dangerous. I mean, the search engines are becoming really good on the web. So anything you put up there, it, it becomes available immediately. It's amazing. I'm just amazed. So if I come along here and I go www.nkuflc.org forward slash um, Covington, if I spelled it right, there it is. There we go. State 1, and then there's nothing in State 2, but State 1's there. And boy, I love this drag and drop from Adobe Flex. And so that's the whole process. Roxanne, thank you so much for asking that question. 
this would have been incomplete without it. And the next question by Eric was, can I make this into an air application? The answer is yes and no. No, I can't. Yes, I can. Okay, so let me explain to you. you. Once you've built a Flex program, you cannot turn it into an air application. You have to start by making it an air application. There's a different set, a, a tag set. It's called, a, I believe, the Window Applications tag. And so what you do is when you make a new project from the start, go New, Flex Project, you'll see you have the choice here to make it a Flex program or a, a desktop application. The coding is exactly the same, okay? You can do a, a lot of different things, though, with a desktop air application. Now, what is an, an Adobe air application? It's something that sits on your desktop, just like an application, and it has access to your system files. So it's really powerful, okay? So, uh, and I could have named this, but I would have to make sure I click that Adobe Air. Now, I have converted Flex and Air back and forth, but you had to work with the tags. It's best just to go ahead along here and start with an Air or start with it that. But what I do, if I have, I've built something out of Flex and I want to turn it into Air, then what I'll do is I'll start changing tags or I'll just go here and I'll redo it and start cutting and pasting code and assets that I need. So it's... Absolutely. Adobe Air is great like that. Say, for example, I wanted to create a podcasting system that I want every student to have on their desktop. Then I could create that and I could distribute that as an Air. They can't go in there and mess with the code and it's on their desktop and they open it up just like an application on their desktop. It is a regular desktop application. Very popular. Um, I have some YouTube tutorials on how to build Air applications. Um, a lot of my work right now is in paper vision and 3D, so I'm you know, obsessed with that. But uh, I'll go back and build a few more Air here and there. Cool. That was a great question. Any more? Cool. <laughs> Sorry about that.